Hey guys, it's Katherine, and today I'm here with a really cool tutorial that will teach you how to make digital stickers for free using Silhouette Studio. Now, Silhouette Studio is a software that um, most people that own some type of Silhouette cutting machine, whether it's a Silhouette Cameo or Silhouette Curio, that's the software that they use in order to create their designs, which they would cut out of some type of vinyl, usually or possibly cardstock. But the basic version of this software is free. You can download it directly from silhouetteamerica.com, which I will link to in the video description. And even if you don't have a silhouette machine, you can still use it to create these stickers. Um, so it's really easy to do. For this tutorial, I'm on a Mac computer. Um, I don't own any Windows products or any other type of products. Um, it's not anything personal. I just prefer Mac. But... Um, you can definitely do this on Windows as well. The software is available for both Windows and Mac users, so there should be no problem there. The only thing I'm not going to be able to tell you how to do if you're using a Windows computer is I'm not going to be able to tell you how to screenshot your design. So you will have to look that up if you don't already know how to do it. So to get started, I'm just going to pull up Silhouette. Um, I'm going to go to my launch pad and I'm going to pull up Silhouette Studio. Apparently I need to upgrade my version of Silhouette Studio. Um, I haven't cut vinyl in a while, but I'm just going to hit later and I'll update it later. So I have Business Edition, which is a paid version of the software, but you can still do this on the free version. So uh, don't even worry about that. Okay, so I'm in Silhouette Studio, and now I want to type. So the first thing that I like to do um, is just come over here to the left where I can select my text, and just in the automatic uh, font that they use, I go ahead and type what I want my sticker to say. So I believe that I want my sticker to say Happy Thanksgiving because I can use this sticker for next week. Okay, so now I want to center this and I want to change the font. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this arrow right here and then just click on the screen and then click back on my text. And instead of having the blinking cursor, because um, I don't want to type anymore, you'll see this box around it. So now I'm going to go to the right and I'm going to select my text panel over there. And here are all of my fonts. I've got tons of fonts. And for this, I'm going to use a font called Espresso Roast. Um, I purchased this a while ago on Creative Market, and it's a really cute font, and I just love it. So that is what this font looks like, and I'll link to that in the video description. So now, um, this is completely optional, but I would like to center this, and I would also like to adjust the vertical spacing. So I'm going to come over here, and where I see all of this alignment right here, I'm going to select the Justify Center alignment. And then... I'm going to come down here and where it says line spacing, um, it's at 100%. I'm just going to erase that and I'm going to try, I'm going to type in 80 to see what 80% looks like. And that's pretty close, but I want it a little bit closer. So now I'm going to try 70 and see what happens. Maybe 65. That's too much. Uh, so I want it between 70 and 65. So I'm going to go to 68. Yeah. So that looks good to me. Okay, so now I want to give this some color and I want to get rid of that red outline because that is a cut line. Um, so that's good if you're cutting vinyl, you know, or something like that. But since you're just making it a sticker, you don't need that outline. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to object and I'm gonna click on ungroup. So now instead of just being text that I can edit, this has been converted to more like an image. So now I can fill in each individual letter if I want to. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the screen and drag and then go over here to where um, these lines are that says open the line style panel, it's on the right. And I'm gonna click on that. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, um, there's two sets of lines right here. So there's these black and white lines and then there's these colored lines. So I'm gonna select the colored lines and then this right here, this pattern right here, um, you wanna select that and it will get rid of your outline. So right now this is invisible. But now I can go over here to my color palette to the right that says open the fill panel. And just right now I'm gonna change it to orange. So now this is filled in orange. 
but I'm thinking I want to alternate some fall colors. So I'm going to play around with this just a little bit. I might alternate my letters in three different colors and see how that looks. So if you want to do something like that, all you would have to do is deselect your image by just clicking on the screen and then one letter at a time. Let's say I wanted this brown and then this shade of orange and then this kind of yellowy orange right here. Um, what I could do is just select the H and that would be brown and then keep that A orange since it's already orange and then select the P and then select this shade. And I'm just going to see how this looks. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. I'm kind of liking it. I like that. Yeah, I like that color combo for Thanksgiving. So I'm definitely going to keep it. Um, so now I might just increase the size just a little bit. So to do that, um, I'm just going to click and press on the screen and drag. And now I'm going to come up here to object again and I'm going to hit group. So now I'm going to click this corner right here and just drag to make it as big as I can while still keeping it on the white area. It's very important for this that you keep it on your, um, this is technically your cutting mat, but just make sure you keep it on the white area for this to work. So now I need to take a screenshot of this. So this is where if you have a Windows computer, you would do something different. Um, because I'm not sure how to take a screenshot on, on a Windows computer. But if you're on a Mac computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, you can hit Command Shift 4. And did you see how my arrow changed to this little, it looks kind of like a target or whatever. I don't know what to call that. And then um, I'm going to come up here to the corner of my screen. I want to make sure it's beyond this T right here because I need to click and drag and I need to make sure I can cover the entire area. So now I'm just going to press down and then drag while I still have my mouse held down and see that gray box around my text so I know I've got my entire text. And now I'm just going to let go and it takes a screenshot. And so when I go to my desktop, it just automatically saves it to your desktop. Um, here it is. So now I've got this image to work with. So from here, in order to get this onto your iPad, you will need to either airdrop it to yourself or email it to yourself, save it to your Google Dropbox or Drive or whatever you have to do, your iCloud Drive. Um, there's a ton of different ways that you can get it on your iPad. So that is completely up to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to airdrop it to myself. Okay, so in order to airdrop it to myself, I am going to hit this box right here that has the up arrow on it and I'm going to select airdrop and I've just unlocked my iPad so my iPad is all ready to go. So now I am going to select, it just popped up, um, my iPad right here and now I've airdropped it to myself. Okay, so now I've airdropped this image to myself and you'll see, you know, it's not the greatest quality because it's just a screenshot. That's why this is only really good for personal use, uh, not commercial use, but it still looks cute and it's still gonna look good in a digital planner. So since I screenshotted this on Silhouette Studio, it's gonna have a white background because I screenshotted it over the white cutting mat in the software. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use an app called Magic Eraser and I'm gonna delete all of my white areas. So I'm gonna pull up that app, this app is completely free. It might make you watch an ad. It probably is going to make us watch an ad. And there it is. So I'm just going to close off of that ad. And now I'm going to select this image from my camera roll. So I'm doing this sideways. Uh, let me rotate my iPad. Okay. So right when you select a photo, it gives you the option to crop. I'm not going to crop this right now. So all I'm going to do is select done. And now I'm just going to tap these white areas and get rid of them. So I'm going to zoom in to get the spaces in between the letters. And if you mess up, it's not a big deal. Um, like if you were to hit a letter, just come up here to, I hope you guys can see this in the screen, but it's right here to this little arrow right here and click that and it'll undo what you just did. Which this font is pretty easy to erase the white areas, but some script fonts, it's a little bit more difficult. Okay. So I've got all of the white areas. So now that I'm ready to save, I'm gonna come up here to this box with the arrow and I'm gonna select it. And then I'm gonna select the PNG with the transparent background so I can click on it 
and click on high resolution. Um, I just always prefer to save things with high resolution. So now I'm going to rotate my iPad back to landscape mode because that's how I prefer to work. And now I can pull this into Good Notes or Procreate. So let me just go to Good Notes. This is my personal planner. Um, let me just go to this page right here. So if I wanted to import this onto my weekly page or any page in GoodNotes, I would just pull it in from my camera roll and it's gonna look like it has a black background, but it doesn't. The black background just means it's a transparent background. So see how when I pull it in, it's transparent. Now it's still saved to the same dimensions as the screenshot. So if you wanna correct that right after you pull it in, just click on it and click on crop. And then you can either do a rectangle crop or a freehand crop. So see, like I was saying, this is pixelated, um, but this is pretty big right now. And then when you shrink it down, you can't tell that it's pixelated. I would not in a million years sell stickers that I've created this way, but for personal use, they're awesome. You can do anything that you can possibly imagine. You can do images. Um, if you're already a Silhouette user like I am, any SVGs you have, you could do this for your personal digital planner. So look how cool that looks. And like you can't see I'm zoomed in and it looks pretty good. You can't tell that it has that kind of, you know, pixelated quality when it's big. So that is how you would do it. You could also pull that into Procreate. You know, if you're like me and you decorate your planner pages in Procreate, it's saved to your camera roll, so you could just pull it into Procreate if you prefer. So that is it. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions at all. I'm going to link to Silhouette Studio, and I'm going to link to the font that I used in the video description. If you like what you saw in this video, if you felt like it was helpful, please leave a thumbs up. That would mean so much to me. Or you can leave a comment and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more digital planning tutorials and digital plan with me videos. And check out my website, naptimealt.com, where there's tons of planner-related freebies that you can download now.